So what does it mean to be on your grizzly? It means hard work, yeah. dedication, and it means progress be uh -huh. on your grizzly. Hard work, dedication, and progress. I'm on my grizzly, y'all. I'm on my grizzly. I'm on my grizzly, y'all. I'm on my grizzly. I'm on my grizzly, y'all. I'm on my grizzly. And if you're busy making moves, say it with me. I'm on my grizzly, y'all. I'm on my grizzly. I'm on my grizzly, y'all. I'm on my grizzly. I'm on my grizzly, y'all. I'm on my grizzly. And if you're busy making moves, say it with me. Coming to you from the city of angels. This is the Grizzly Podcast with Irvin Scott and Melissa Santos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Grizzly Podcast. I am your host, Irvin Scott. And I'm your host, Melissa Santos. What's up, guys? I'm excited. <laughs> As usual, we've always got the special guest, but this one is extra special. She's an <laughs> actress and singer. She's best known for her role as Taylor Hathaway in the Nickelodeon series, The Haunted Hathaways. Uh, she's also in the Netflix film, Hubie Halloween with Adam Sandler. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today, the lovely and wonderful... Amber Frank. <laughs> Hi guys. Thank you so Thank much you. for having me. I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. We're super excited Hi. to have you. Of course. Yeah, thanks so much for being a part of the show. We appreciate you coming on and we got so much to talk about. We felt like you were somebody that just needed to be on this show, especially because this is the show. It's the Grizzly Podcast. And what we do here is basically focus on people such as yourself who are constantly grinding. They're constantly on their hustle. And we feel like you embody that. You've been doing your thing for quite some time now, beginning with your acting career. So from what I read and from what I understand, mm -hmm. you started acting at an early age. You started acting at the age of eight. Is that correct? Yeah. So I started training a little bit when I was like seven, but I really got into it when I was eight. Um, and I lived in Florida. And at the time, there wasn't really a lot of online resources. And there definitely wasn't a lot of resources in general in Florida. You kind of had to be in LA or you had to be in New York, which it's different now. Now you can like submit yourself from home, self tape from home, everything, especially from COVID is at home now with Zoom and stuff. At the time, we didn't have any of that. And we just kind of didn't even know where to begin. Um, but my dad was friends with somebody who had a son and had moved to LA from Florida, got into the business and had started working a little bit. She was managing him. So when I discovered that I really wanted to be an actress, which was when I was super young, something I always knew I wanted to do. Um, I didn't know how exactly I wanted to be in the entertainment industry, but I knew that I wanted to be part of it somehow. I always loved entertaining people. I always loved telling jokes. Like I used to get all the kids in my neighborhood together and do like an air band. So we'd have like the air microphone, the air guitar, air drum, <laughs> like me and my friend Zoe would fight over who'd be the lead singer. And so <laughs> I just always wanted to do it. Um, so my dad reached out and kind of got in touch with uh, this woman named Mary. She became my manager. Um, I kind of had a little bit of an agent in Florida. And so I was auditioning for little stuff. But there really wasn't a lot. Um, and like my thing that I would do was I would go to Disney World on the weekends and I'd go at like four o'clock in the morning and we'd film promos. And then my pay was that I got to stay in the park all day. And to me, obviously, like seven, eight years old, that was like the greatest thing that could have ever happen. I was like, I love acting. <laughs> like, not acting at all. Um, but so, yes, yeah, so I got into it that way. I ended up doing the lead in this movie that never really was released because it was it was kind of like a sensitive situation the family made it and it was about a eight-year-old seven-year-old girl that was walking home from school and she went missing and they never found out what happened to her they don't really have leads um so and still to this day nobody really knows what happened to her this was like years and years ago maybe like 35 years ago now the movie you're referring to is actually the, the one where you played the role of jennifer right the 2008 yes. drama she could it's be you yeah, she could be you. Um, so I played the girl that went missing. And for me, it was a really interesting experience because I was so young and I had only known acting as like Disney Channel and Nickelodeon and that kind of stuff. And then going on set and filming these scenes, playing this little girl that like the family was making the movie, the aunt was directing it, the mom's producing it. And so they're all on set and they're like watching me embody their daughter that they had lost. And it was a really emotional experience. And for me to realize at such a young age that acting can affect people in such an intense, heavy way that 
I was like, this is what I want to do. I know that this is like my purpose in life. And so ever since I got off that movie set, basically, I've been pursuing my dream. And we moved out to LA shortly after my parents were like, all right, this is it. This is what she meant to do. So let's pack our bags and go. And we moved out here. We're supposed to be in LA for like 12 weeks and haven't gone back. It's been like 14 years. (laughs) So yeah, it's been a journey. That's so great that your parents are so, uh, you know, supportive of that. And, you know, it's like, it created such success for you. That's great. For sure. Yeah, no, I definitely would not have been able to do it without them. And I feel very lucky um, that I got to do that. I know a lot of parents are kind of, they're a little uh, hesitant to get their kids into the entertainment industry because it is, it's intense. It's brutal. And it was a little tough at times with my self-esteem growing up because you just, it's just inevitable. You're going to be constantly rejected. You're not going to book everything. And so it was, uh, it was a little tough for me growing up, but I wouldn't change it because it's so rewarding and I know it's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm definitely very lucky to have had parents to not only help get me into the industry, but be there for me and support me emotionally as I went through the journey. Mm-hmm. And both you and your brother, Zach, actually went through the journey because I know he was also part of yeah. Radio Disney and he was their NBT. It's exciting to be a part of this acting world, I'm sure. But at the same time, as a child, are you looking at things differently as well? Is it all fun or what's your state of mind as a kid, basically? Yeah, as a kid, I feel like I definitely saw it as a business. Like I, um, it was fun when I would get to go on set, but that's like such a fraction of the time of actually what you're doing. Um, for me, I was in classes, I was auditioning, like we didn't have a lot of money. We were moving around a lot. We didn't know anything about LA. We didn't have friends here. Like me and my brother started in homeschool. And so we didn't make friends in school and we're kind of just like moving around. And my dad wasn't here a lot because he was back home still in Florida trying to work. And so it was just, it was a lot to go through. Um, And it made it that much more rewarding when I did work, but it wasn't a lot of the time. And so for me, it was, it was exciting when those moments would happen, but a lot of it was the work. And so it's a really interesting thing to try to explain how it feels when you're a kid, you kind of like, but it's also at the same time, like I felt like in a way it was all I really knew because I was so young when I started it that I kind of like, feel like when people say like, oh, it must be so sad for a pet to be like in a little like house all the time, but it's kind of like their only environment that they've known, right? So like for me, there were so many things that I went through where other people on the outside are like, how did you survive that? And for me, it was like, it was just my life. It was just what I knew. And so I kind of just dealt with it day by day. And as I got older, certain things affected me. And I started to realize like, oh, I'm, I think I have this toxic trait because I got it from feeling not good enough. Or I think I have, and by toxic trait, I mean like the way that I kind of talk to myself sometimes or the way that I feel about myself or how like, I don't take a lot of time for myself. I don't do a lot of self-care. And those are all things that really affected me when the quarantine first happened. Um, And it was, it was good for me because I got to like be forced to stay home and not work and have to like deal with all of those other things that I didn't realize the industry had affected me. Um, And so now like I make sure I take a lot of time for myself. I make sure that like, I'm only taking projects that I really care about. Um, I take a lot of the stress off of me of like, I have to work so I I can support everybody around me. And for a long time, I carried that on my shoulders, not because I was made to feel that way, but I just made myself feel that way. Um, And because we just struggled financially a lot when I was young. And so I just naturally felt like I had to, I had to work. And my brother felt the same way too. Like we have to work so that we aren't in this position. And it's, it's just this thing that like, as you get older, you realize that, we didn't need to feel that way, but obviously we were like, we want to take care of the family. They're like, our parents are doing this for us. Like we have to, we have to put in our part. (laughs) And so now that I'm older, I know that like, it wasn't really like that, but there's definitely some things that made it tough. But at the same time, like when I am on set, it's the most incredible thing. It's so much fun. Like I love every second of it. I love all the work that I put into it. Um, I love like 
getting to embody another person and understand why somebody feels the way that they do and get to like learn new dynamics and learn new relationships. I love working with new people. I love like putting together a wardrobe for a character. Like those are all things that are so fun to me. And so it was stressful as a kid at times because you're trying to understand. And and when you're starting in the business, you don't understand how it works. You have this idea that you're going to like move to LA and you're going to work and become famous. And it's not like that at all. And so it was just like, it was a weird um, experience. It's kind of difficult to explain how it feels. It's a lot of emotions, but, um, but at the end of the day, it was always worth it because I have so much fun when I'm working. I love it. I mean, you're a baby. I mean, that's just hard enough is like growing up and just like experiencing all the different changes that like, you know, that happen with that. Right. So I feel like everybody's goes through just growing and just becoming an adult and the challenges you face in your childhood and your teenage years. And so for me, it was just a different setting. I just went through different sorts of things. Like I didn't deal with high school drama. I didn't go to high school, but I dealt with that's like, fine. That's yeah. Fine. Dealing with any of that. I'm yeah, like, no, I was like, there's nothing you missed. Absolutely zero. I'll tell you. Yeah, that <laughs> I know. I always say like, the Thank one God. thing I wanted to do was go to prom and my friend Paris, like she never went either. And so she threw like a prom themed birthday party for all her friends. Cause like none of us really went to prom. We were like, cool. We had our prom. It, it was just a party. And that's whatever. literally what it is. It's like yeah. a party, you get dressed up and there you go. But exactly. But yeah. So I, you know, parts of me at times was like, I missed out on high school. And then I'm like, well, you know, I didn't miss out on a lot. And also I was going through a completely different thing. Like I was becoming famous at a young age and I was working a lot and I was dealing with like being in the public eye and having friends that I was publicly compared to. Like when you're in high school, you have like a best friend that maybe you have jealousy issues or you have like guy issues and stuff. And like now I'm going through that publicly and I'm going through like this weird thing of having other people have an opinion on you that don't know you. And then social media started like right when my show was coming out. And like, I remember getting on Instagram like the first year that like I was starting to audition for Anna Hathaway's, I think it was like maybe the year before, but it was just such a weird, like, it was, it was my own thing. It was my own high school, you know, it was my own version of it. So I still like went through a lot of the same things as most people just in a different way. In a world now where social media is part of our lives. I can't imagine what you've gone through or what you went through in the past, but being in the spotlight like that. And then people can talk about it on social media. Like it's very, it's a very awkward situation, not a very cool situation to be a part of. I think as a kid, I think as a kid, it's even more. Totally like gone through that whole growth of like Mm -hmm. before when I would read certain Instagram comments and stuff, I was so quick to like argue back with people. And as I've gotten older and I've like gotten used to social media and I just know how it goes. Now I just laugh at stuff. Um, Because people will be so crazy sometimes. And it's just so interesting to to feel like you. everybody sees internet drama. Everybody sees the comments. Everybody sees E! News where they're posting about Tristan Thompson and Lamar Odom, like arguing on Chloe's photo. It's such an interesting thing to see like so many people have an opinion on your life and feel like they really know you. They feel like they own you. I think. Yeah, they definitely do. And it's, it's just when I was younger, I didn't know how to deal with it. I was like, you don't know me. You don't know my life. And now I'm just like, it's just what it is. Like I put myself out there and I know that it's part of what I do. It's, it's, you know, I, and I like that my fans feel like they know me and I like that they feel like we have a real friendship and I feel like I have a real friendship with my fans. And so there's definitely positive aspects to it. It's just when you deal with certain people that can be so quick to like hate on you and judge you. I'm really good now with, I just laugh at those comments. Like they make me, sometimes I like crack up laughing. I'll like be going to bed one night and I'm just going through Instagram and and like, I'll see comments or something. And I'm like, hey, Wes, look what this person said. <laughs> and we'll laugh. Like, it's just crazy what people will do. Um, but when I was young, I did not think it was funny. I used to, like, I didn't want social media. And I had a whole team being like, you have to have Instagram. It's part of your career. Uh, you're missing out on roles because this so-and-so has been posting every single day. And they have really high engagement. And I'm like, 
I can't believe Instagram has a say in like who books movie roles. It's just, it's just the way that it is now. So yeah. I have to deal with it and I've gotten used to it. But when I was younger, woo, it was, it was hard for me. I used to be so sensitive with comments. I would hope that you have a strong support system because just knowing your brother and your mom, they're very good people. I'm sure they've always had your back. So if yeah. you ever felt like you had some sort of like feeling about something, I'm sure you can just come and talk to them and they'd probably give you some advice, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if like my mom has a fan account for me where she's like going on and defending me <laughs> to haters and stuff like <laughs> Mama Bear for sure. Um, and my brother too. like my brothers always if I have a hard time and I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling like low self-esteem because people are saying this about me or blah, 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 whatever. He's always been like really protective of me and and just helpful. Like he'll talk me through those negative feelings and and he's always been like a huge supporter of mine, which is really awesome. And you guys are very close and he is yeah. older by a couple of months. Uh, one year and two months, 14 months older. Like I think he was four months old when my mom got pregnant with me. People always think, they, are you guys twins? <laughs> I think it's called Irish twins when it's very, very close, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like around a year. A year like, ish. So that was yeah, pretty close. Like I would, I would still consider you guys that because you guys are so close in age. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. After you did the, uh, the She Could Be You film, uh, you also appeared in various TV shows, including the ABC comedy Man Up. Uh, what was it like being a part of that show? Yeah, so that was actually my first, like, big job. Um, before that, I had done, like, student films and short films, and um, maybe I had done, like, a commercial. I can't remember exactly the timeline, but I had never really been on like a big set. Um, I had never been like on a network show before or anything like that. And so when I, and it was a really small part, but like when I booked it, I thought I was like, my life will never be the same. Um, and it was just really fun to go. And like, we did our table read at the big Disney building because Disney owns ABC. Um, and then like, we got to go to the ranch where they shoot like all of the Disney and ABC stuff. And like, I remember going down the street and you see all these houses and I was thinking like, this is like a real neighborhood. This is so crazy. And then we went inside the one house that they had like cast holding in and it was just all like completely empty, like tin, like metal. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like we watch these shows and we think this is a real neighborhood. They shoot there all the time. And none of the houses are real. Like some of them, they like build the set inside if they're shooting inside of it. But for the most part, if they're not using it, they're just like completely empty, like metal homes. It's so weird. <sighs> so that was like my first moment of like seeing movie magic. And um, I just loved everybody that I worked with. Like the lead cast like Dan Fogler looks so funny and it was really hard for me to not laugh during working with him but um it was such a crazy experience like I got to go to wardrobe and I got to like get my hair and makeup done and like be on the set and work with these like incredibly talented actors Terry Polo like it was really really fun so that was probably the moment when I was like oh yeah this has been worth it this has been worth the like I think it had been like five years of trying to book work um and then shortly after that was when i got my nickelodeon show so your role as taylor hathaway in the nickelodeon series the haunted hathaways uh from what i heard it took you maybe eight auditions to, to land that role yeah, yeah so they had been auditioning for that show for months and at first i auditioned for the thundermans which was like the other show that was being created at the same time um, and they told me, they were like, oh yeah, they, I, I got really close on it. And I thought I was like, this is it. Like, this is the one I'm going to book. I just had this feeling. And then they were like, yeah, they decided to go ethnic. They wanted like, um, uh, someone that I was like Hispanic, I think. And which I am Hispanic, but I think they were trying to say that they were going to go like full Mexican or something. I wasn't really sure, but they just said like, we're going ethnic whatever that means. And so I was like, I was so upset. I thought I was really going to get that role. And this is actually a funny story because Kira, who booked the role on the Thundermans, she auditioned for my role and they told her the same thing. And 
it just goes to show how casting will just lie to you <laughs> and just, just kind of let you off easy. Um, but um, yeah, so after I didn't get that, I was heartbroken and I wanted to quit the business. I was like, I'm done. I'm not auditioning anymore. I don't want to do this. This is way too hard. It's been years of trying to work. All I've done really was that man up thing, um, the man up show. And I was just like, I just can't do this anymore. This is just too hard on my soul, my spirit, like it's hard on my family. I'm missing out on like having friends, being in school, like school activities. Um, and so I was just like, I'm just done. I don't want to do it anymore. And my parents were like, you love this so much. We've put so much into this. We've been through so much for you to do this. Like, just give it till the end of the year. If you really don't want to do it anymore, you don't have to, but like, basically we're not going to let you give up this easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, my next audition was the haunted Hathaways. So I go in for it and the cast directors like didn't laugh at all, which usually when you audition for, a comedy like casting yeah. will be laughing and like oh my god that's so funny you're so good haha -ha. and it was none like, <laughs> of that it was just like okay cool all right thank you for coming in and I was just like I'm not gonna book that there's no way I'm gonna book that like I just completely bombed my audition um uh, it, no it's done and we went home. I think we went through like the Burger King drive through and I sat in the bags and I was like, I don't want anything. And I was in such a bad mood. And I remember my mom saying to my dad, like, yeah, that audition did not go well. I was in such a bad mood. And I was just like, I'm done. I know I'm not going to book this. Like I'm over it. I put so much work into that audition. Like I rehearsed so many times for it. I spent so much time reading the script and working on it over and over. And, um, I think it was like a few days later like oh yeah amber got a call back for it they want to see her tomorrow and i was like what so i was genuinely shocked i really did not think that that was going any further for me um so i went back in and the vibe was a little bit better um and i ended up learning later on that casting had just seen so many people and they were having the hardest time finding somebody and then when i went in they were like wait, this could work. And they were just really like watching me and really taking it in. And on my end, I thought they just like didn't think I was funny. So that was another lesson of like, you never really can take how your audition goes too seriously because you really never know like what the other person's really thinking or doing. Um, so yeah, so I, I did my callback and then I did like a mix and match and then a producer session, a director session, a screen test. I think I'd gotten like, six auditions in and then they like my mom got a phone call from a friend and was like hey I saw that they put Taylor Hathaway back on breakdowns like they're starting to do open calls again and so that's how I found out that they like I thought that they didn't want to book me for it and then I was upset all over again and then we ended up finding out that they thought I was like too tall because they had just cast the guy who plays Miles and he, he was like 12. He was like anywhere from a year and within a year of like going through a growth spurt, but he had been a little bit shorter than me. And so they were like, yeah, we really want somebody who's the same height as him. And I was taller. And so they auditioned a bunch more. I had to just like sit around like sick to my stomach for several weeks and then they call and they're like hey you can find anybody want to bring you back in and then the casting directors call me and they're like so when you come back in for your screen test like wear ballet flats and like kind of stand on like one leg and like lean <laughs> down like, we really want this to be over and done we really uh, think that you're gonna book this like we just need to make you look shorter like so crazy and so I'm like I can't believe I might lose out on this role because I'm too tall and like barely and because they wanted me to be the same height as this kid who's like who the within the next year had gotten so tall like basically overnight he was just at that age of a boy like when they're about to grow a lot um so it was so silly but yeah so I went back in I like wore my little ballet flats and I was like standing like this like <laughs> crouching down and um and then after that I think I screen tested one more time and then I ended up booking it and yeah my life was never the same after that 
Yeah, definitely not the same, especially because the show had major success. It basically hit record-breaking numbers, and you were nominated for an NAACP award, as well as an Imagine Award for your involvement with the show. Is that true? Yeah, so I was nominated for my role on uh, The Haunted Hathaways for both of those things, and those were that was a big deal to me because... Those were really special award shows. They weren't like your typical like KCAs. They were ones that really meant something to me. So I was I was definitely really honored. And I remember getting the phone call that I had been nominated. And I just couldn't imagine myself ever being nominated for something. Like when obviously when you become an actor or a singer, your goal is like, I'm going to win a Grammy someday, or I'm going to win an Oscar. Like, I feel like if you are an artist, like that's always your goal. And for me, I definitely would be like, yeah, that'd be great. But I never could actually imagine myself winning anything. So it was a very surreal moment to be nominated for an award. It was just like, it was like, wait, me? Like, <laughs> Why? Why? Why me? <laughs> but it was really cool. And I loved getting to go to the award shows and like get all dressed up. And it was fun. It'll go down in history. You're part of the Nickelodeon umbrella. So what's it like being a part of just Nickelodeon in general? I mean, I think that's something that I think kids just dream to, to be a part of. So uh, yeah. being that you had the opportunity to be a part of Nickelodeon, uh, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was. Um, I just remember, I think the moment for me where it really hit me was when the show well there was two one the first time i ever saw the commercial on nickelodeon for it was like the craziest feeling that you could never explain unless somebody has felt it it was just like this especially after years and years and years of trying to work and just being told no over and over again and like constantly being evicted because we were so broke like not being able to afford acting classes like my mom would go and work and volunteer at the church to pay for our summer camp. And so it was just like, now I'm actually doing it. And it wasn't just, I'm going to work and I'm filming the show. Like now I'm seeing the result on TV and it's Nickelodeon, like the network that I constantly watch that I grew up watching. And so it was a crazy moment. And then, um, the other moment was when they had put the show on the, website because I used to go on nick.com and play like video games and stuff computer <laughs> games and whatever and um yeah it was like it was I went on nick.com literally I think just to, like just to like play on it I think I was like 14 probably too old to be doing like Nickelodeon computer games but I went on <laughs> nick.com and I see that they have like my face as one of the little icons where you could click on each show and go and like look at clips and like do quizzes and games and stuff. And I remember there was like a game that had my face on it. And then there was like, which character are you most like? And I'm like, I bet I'm going to get Taylor. <laughs> and it was just like to see my face on the website as well. Um, and to really feel like you said, like under the Nickelodeon umbrella and to really feel a part of the company was a crazy like WTF moment. Um, and it, it just made me feel like almost it wasn't even me. Like I was kind of watching a different version of myself, but it was, it was really interesting. And I definitely feel I'll always be grateful, like no matter where my career takes me, I'll always be grateful that Nickelodeon gave me my start and they really believed in me. Very cool that you were a part of that. Now, The Haunted Hathaways is currently available on Netflix. And speaking of Netflix, you kind of partnered with them and you've done a couple of things with them. And we'll start off with landing the role of Lucky in the Emmy-nominated TV series Spirit Riding Free, which is also yeah. available on Netflix. What was that like? I'm just going to say before you answer that, my daughter is like obsessed with it. <laughs> I have a three-year-old and like Spirit. I'm like, okay, we're going to watch oh it. God. We're going to watch everything Spirit related. So I think that's phenomenal because yeah. I'm very, very uh familiar with lucky uh um, like yeah yeah it's amazing but I love I, that I, no that <laughs> makes I love hearing that it makes me so happy because yeah. it's like without those little kids like our show would be nothing would yeah be obsessed it's cute anywhere it's, so. it's awesome it's it's really cool like just like series shows movies yeah. I mean there's so much so yeah. yeah I know it's turned into such well it's crazy because when I first auditioned for it didn't even really know like what it was going to be and I don't even know if DreamWorks really knew that it was going to turn into a series. Definitely nobody knew how successful it was going to become. It started as kind of like a smaller project for them. And um, 
for some reason, normally when you do animation auditions, you just send in like an MP3. And this one, I had like a location, like I was going in and auditioning and I don't know why, but for some reason, I just thought that it was a live action project. And so I get there and I walk in and I'm like, wait, DreamWorks is animation. DreamWorks doesn't do live action. Like, is this like going to be their first live action project? And I start thinking about like, I think this is a cartoon. And I went in and I almost had this moment of like, oh my God, I should have like started rehearsing what my voice is going to sound like. Like, how am I going to talk? And all of this stuff is like racing through my mind. And so I just auditioned like as if it was a live action and it ended up working in my favor because that's what they were looking for. They wanted it to have a more grounded, natural feel to it. And so they didn't want me to put on some silly voice or anything. They wanted me to just really be me, just kind of a little bit of a younger version of myself. Um, and so, and I remember when I went for my callback that there was a girl there who is a really well-known actress, a lot more well-known than me. And I was like, yep, I'm not going to get this. Like, she's going to get this. I kind of just wrote it off already in my head that I, ha- that I wasn't going to book it. And, um, also like on my way there, I had almost gotten in a car accident. I had just started driving. I just got my license. And the day before I got in my first car accident and I was so scarred. And I was like, I, I was so scared to drive the next day. Like, you know, when you get in your first car accident as like a teenager and you're just terrified to drive again. And the next day, like I had to go to this, um, this producer session and I was living up in Santa Clarita. My audition was like in Glendale. So that's really far, crazy freeways. And I was just like, I was having so much anxiety and I'm trying to get over from one freeway to the other. And this like 18 wheeler truck was like, trying to literally run me off the road and was like laying on his horn and like yelling at me through the, through his window. And I was so upset and I like, I get there and I park and I just like in my car, I'm like, okay, let it go. And I like go inside and I run in and I was late. Cause I was like driving super slow and I like missed my exit. So I was like 10 minutes late And I always make a point to be early, like at least like five to 10 minutes early. I hate being late. And so when I was late, I was like even more stressed out and I go in and I'm just like, oh my God, you guys, I'm so sorry. Like I really didn't mean to be late, but like I just got in a car accident yesterday and I'm so scared to drive and I missed my exit and this 18 wheeler tried running me off the road and it was so crazy. But anyway, okay, let's go. And they're like, do you need a minute? Like, are you okay? And I was like, no, let's go, let's do it. And I did it. And they're, they're like, you, how did you just do this? Like you just killed this audition and you're, I don't understand. So, um, then I left the audition. I kind of forgot about it. I didn't think that I was going to get it because I was like so flustered. And I had seen that girl there auditioning who was like a really big actress. She's really well known. And I just didn't think that I was going to get it. So then like, a couple weeks later, um, I went to go do ADR for this film that I had done. And ADR is like when you have to go in and punch in lines because there's problems with the audio. So for anybody like I saying that doesn't know what that is. Um, and so I went in and they were like, OK, so this is your first line you have to do. And they were kind of like trying to coach me on a little bit because I'd never done ADR before. Um, and they were like, all right, well, let's do the first line. And so I do it and they're like, okay, can we hear her now? Like, we don't want to hear the film version. We want to hear her. And the audio guy was like, that was her. And they were like, what? Like, that's crazy. And so that whole session, it was supposed to be a six hour session. I think we were done in like two hours. Um, We had to like dub almost the whole movie because there was serious audio issues with it. And um, they were just like, I can't believe you've never done this before. Have you ever thought about getting into voiceover? And I was like, no, like I never book voiceover I audition for it all the time. I never book it. I've been auditioning for it for like seven years. And then literally probably five minutes later, I get a phone call that I had booked spirit. And at first I was like, spirit, what was that? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that was that cartoon that I auditioned for. Like, what are the chances? So when I went back in for my first day, um, 
to look at the artwork and stuff, the producers told me, they were like, when you came in and you were so flustered and you had been through that whole thing, first of all, it was so lucky, like going on this crazy adventure. I was just going to say, like, that's literally what she is. I'm like, it was, yeah. perfect. It was freaking perfect. Literally. Yeah. Lucky gets into adventures. So she gets herself into trouble all the time, cool. <laughs> but she always pulls through and saves the day. Mm-hmm. And so yeah that began my journey and we did the show up until we did our last episode last year so and then they they did the film the film is a different um cast and crew they did like a the film side just used like a they did like a whole different version of it i'm pretty sure i haven't seen the film but um but it's just so crazy to like think that our show was so successful that it became a film and going into target for the first time and seeing all of the merchandise and like seeing the doll and stuff and like the doll (laughs) looked like me it it was just it was such a crazy feeling and I've got connected with so many incredible people over the years because they've been fans of the show or like because you don't really realize that celebrities like they watch tv too and so all of a sudden I'm like watching Jimmy Fallon and like Dwayne Johnson's talking about how his kid watches spirit and it's like this crazy moment of like, oh my gosh, like, it's just such a weird, such a weird thing. But um, it, it was so rewarding to see how successful the show became because I said all the time, like, it was, pr- it's probably my favorite thing I've ever worked on. And I always say like, this is the show that I wish I had when I was a young girl, like to feel so empowered and feel like I can be the hero and I can be the lead. And it, it can be me and my girlfriends just like, taking over town, saving the day and like feeling independent. Like those were things that I didn't really have a lot of that growing up. And so it's also really rewarding to feel like I was a part of such a powerful, impactful show for young girls. You know, and speaking of Dwayne Johnson, your relationship (laughs) with The Rock, I see you guys on social media all the time, just kind of sharing each other's (laughs) videos. He'll be posting videos uh, talking about you. You'll be talking about him. You're tasting his ice cream. You're talking about the tequila. Yeah, talk to us about your relationship with The Rock. What's that like? Oh my gosh. It's such a like, such a random friendship, right? But so basically like I saw his interview on Jimmy Fallon um, and I'm just like, what? Rock is seen spirit like oh my gosh I went to a recording session like the next day and I was like guys Dwayne Johnson watches our show and everybody was like I know we saw it last night like we're so happy um and so it started with that and then like I think a year later um my brother Zach is a huge fan of him he like all of his workout clothes are project rock and mm-hmm. he's just like a huge, he looks up to him so much. And so he, uh, he was actually the one who told me about uh, Dwayne Johnson making a tequila. And he was like, yeah, like, it's called Terramana. Let's go and get it. It's coming out this week. <laughs> and so uh, I was like, all right. So I called around a few different places. I found a place that sold it. They had just gotten it in. And so I called my brother and I was like, Hey, like, you want to try the Terramana tequila today? And he's like, Hey, yeah. (laughs) And so uh, I go and I pick him up. We go to the liquor store. We get the bottle of the Terramana, come home. And I'm thinking in my mind, like that he'll never see it. I'm like, the rock's not going to watch this. He's not going to watch my story. He's probably got like so many. I have a fraction of the followers and I don't even see all my DMs. So I'm like, there's no way that he's ever going to see this. But I like to just kind of like document my day. I just do that every day. I put all my stories like when I'm up to and whatever. And so I took a little video of us trying it and like cheersing with it. And I tried it and that was like a genuine reaction. I couldn't believe how good it was. So I posted it. I tagged Terramana in it. And then like a couple hours later, Terramana responded to me and I was like, Terramana saw my story (laughs) like oh my gosh and I felt so like honored that just the tequila's Instagram had seen it and then this was like later on in the night where we are like half a bottle in like me my brother his girlfriend my boyfriend we're all hanging out we're drinking it enjoying it hanging out by the pool having a great time it was like the first time since the lockdown that we had like all been together and hanging out, we were just having like such a great day. And we decided we're going to walk down the street to go get food. 
and we're walking down the street and I get this ding on my phone and I look and it says uh, Instagram message, the rock. And it was like this whole long paragraph. And I'm like, I was like, wait, that's not real. <laughs> and I was, I'm looking at it again and again and again and again and again. And I'm checking in and I'm like, there's no way this is real. I'm like, I, I, this says the rock, right? Like, am I just this drunk? <laughs> and then I'm like seeing things <laughs> and, um, <laughs> It, it, it was really him. And he had just said like the nicest, sweetest message to me. I couldn't believe that he had even seen my story. I couldn't believe that he even responded. And then on top of all of that, like what he said was just so beyond kind. Um, and it, it was just like, I, I felt so touched. Like I don't even have a lot of regular friends that talk to me so kindly. Um, and so just since that moment, like, I think, oh, actually the moment that like, I feel like we, we had this like weird friendship form was when, um, I, Paul was here, my stepdad, him and my mom were here visiting and, um, they were talking about how Paul had wrestled Rocky Johnson. And so they were talking about it and they were like, let's see if we can find videos of it. And, um, they, my, my stepdad, Paul had ended up finding a video of him back in the day wrestling. And, um, I was like, Oh, I got to post this. I got to send this to Dwayne. And so I put it on my story and it happened to be, um, Rocky Johnson's first birthday since he had passed. And, um, when I Googled it and we were looking at the videos and everything, I realized that I'm like, that's kind of a weird moment. So I posted it. I said like happy birthday to him and I tagged the rock in it and I messaged him about it privately. And he was just like, what your stepdad is Paul diamond. Are are you serious? Max moon. (laughs) Yeah. And it was just like, he was so amazed by it. And he's like, I can't believe that we're connected in this way. And, And then I ended up finding out from my dad that like my dad had photographed him like years ago when he was first getting into wrestling. And so there's like all of these connections that we have together that we've shared. Um, and there's like very similar stories that his mom has that my mom have. And, um, and so we've just we've never met in person. We just like Instagram DM once in a while and show each other support. And uh, yeah, it's a very random friendship, but he's just like the nicest, probably the nicest person, like let alone celebrity, Um, And it's just so crazy that we've even connected at all. And we're like connected in these random ways. And so, yeah, always, we always say like, got to get together one of these days and have some Terramana and talk about wrestling. I'm like, okay, I wasn't alive then. Like I didn't, I wasn't part of that, but you know, we'll bring Paul with us (laughs) and share stories. But yeah. And then um, after I watched Young Rock, I realized, oh my God, like, the moments that I'm like posting these videos and talking to him about this, I didn't realize he was filming that show. He was filming like a version of his dad wrestling and him as a little kid. And he's like over here telling me stories about, Oh yeah, I remember being a little kid and like watching Paul diamond wrestle and then like sitting in the audience. And so it kind of like hit me later on, like, wow, that must've been kind of weird for him to have me like randomly sending him this stuff while he's filming the show and of like similar moments that he grew up, going through so yeah very very random friendship but it's it's awesome like I can't believe that uh it happened and I hope we can work together someday like I think it'd be really awesome I'd love to like play his daughter or something in a movie so that would that would be like that'd be really fun because I know he would probably be like awesome to work with manifesting it. you're manifesting it it's yeah gonna manifesting Dwayne, well, let's make it happen come on now yeah let's go <laughs> yeah, come on DJ I'm waiting <laughs> You've been so fortunate. One thing I noticed while you were speaking about the show earlier and while you were talking about The Rock as well, I noticed the ring on your finger. Uh, yeah. Are you engaged? <laughs> no. So this is so funny because this has come up like four or five times just in the last week, people noticing it. I've had this ring for five years. It's from my boyfriend. Um, we started dating in like February of 2016-ish. For those that don't know, her boyfriend is Wesley Stromberg yes. from the band, uh, the rap rock band, Emblem 3. They were seen yes. in the X Factor show. So, yeah, tell us about how you guys met. 
Yeah, so we have a funny story. We kind of, um, well, my friend had been set up on a blind date with him and we were all going out together for New Year's Eve. Um, and so we all went over to his house. I had never met him before. He was just having friends over. And um, we ended up talking for a long time out back about just like music and whatever. And um, and then he, I think I'd gone on a couple like dates with my friend. And so I wasn't interested in him like that at all. And then um, a couple months later, they they didn't click. They like didn't have any chemistry. She was like, yeah, I'm not into that. Like she was um, really in love with someone at the time. And so that was like not a thing in my mind that that was ever going to happen. Like I'm not I was always like the kind of person's like, I'll never date a guy that my my friends dated or anything like that. Like no drama. I'm not like a drama person. So I was like steering clear. He starts texting me and I'm like blowing him off a lot because I'm like, I'm not going to date a guy that my friend had just dated. And so um, I ended up throwing this anti Valentine's Day party and I invited him to it. And it was like on the flyer. It said like singles only. And, uh, yeah, he came, he asked me to be his Valentine. We had our first kiss and then, um, we didn't really start dating right away just because of like the awkwardness of like me being hesitant because he had just gone out with my friend, even though that they had only been on like a couple of dates, it still was weird for me. Um, and then we just became best friends over time. And then it happened pretty quickly after we had formed a friendship um and so yeah it's been awesome like I feel like I have just my best friend to cuddle with all the time and yeah so uh but yeah my ring is a promise ring he got this for me um like a year ish after or something like that I don't know exactly what um yeah so I've had it for like five years but it's so funny because I'll have friends be like wait did you get engaged I'm like I've had this for five years how do you not know um but yeah it, we kind of are married in a way though we like live together have our pets they're kind of like our kids and we do everything together support each other with all of our endeavors and everything we eventually want to like make country music together and <laughs> be like a country country couple band kind of thing so cute I love that idea please do that <laughs> no <laughs> it's just like I never really got super into country after I moved away from Florida and then he we, we just randomly like got into it listening to it together I think we just had like been flipping through the channels and like ended up on the country channel on the radio and just we just like got into country music and we're like we should write country music together that'd be really cute <laughs> And speaking of music, you know, he makes music, but you also make music as well. You made a uh, AT&T commercial and you sang in the commercial, right? Yeah. So, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. <laughs> that was like, I think I was like 12 when I did that, maybe um, it's like 10 years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. So I kind of did that. It was more of just like a small thing. Like when I was on Nickelodeon, I did a couple things on the show where I had to sing here and there, but nothing too crazy. I wasn't like super into it. Um, because my brother was an artist and that was like his thing. Like my thing was acting, his thing was music. And we didn't really want to like step on each other's toes. Cause we were always grouped together with everything, always compared to each other. And so we kind of like to have our own thing. Um, and now that we've gotten older, like Zach's gotten really back into acting. I've gotten more into music. We're not like little kids anymore that think that you have to only do one thing. You know, we realize that we can both do our own thing. Um, and so I started writing music when I was like 14. It started as just poetry. And then I realized that I was really good at putting melodies together. Um, and so I kind of learned like the basics of guitar and I'm not really good at guitar, but I know like basic chords that I can play and kind of like put my poetry to. And then, um, when I was on Nickelodeon, I met with this producer and I was going to have a meeting at Sony and it just didn't go good. It was kind of traumatizing and it kind of like made me not want to do music. Um, and so I didn't involve myself in it for a long time. Um, and then when Wes and I started dating, he really encouraged me to get back into it. And 
he's like, you should do it for yourself. Don't do it for other people. Like you have such great poetry. This would be such a pretty song. You have to really give yourself a chance with this. And so um, I just randomly ended up getting linked with this producer, Brandon Jarrett. And um, I was so scared my first session because I had always experienced people wanting to like change my art and tell me like what I had to sing about or what my lyrics should be or how my song should sound trying to make me like bubblegum pop which I didn't want to do I have like a very old soul I wanted to do like more jazz kind of music jazz inspired and so when I went into the session my producer he's just like what do you want to do like you tell me and he let me like listen through every single sound and let me put it together myself and if he played something and he was like, if you don't like it, like tell me. And I'd be like, well, let's change it a little bit. And he's like, great. He never like told me that I had to change anything about myself. He always made it a really safe place for me to go in and um, write and talk about personal stuff, like always write about personal experience stuff. And so um, that was like another thing that kind of made it tough for me to get into music was because I had to like share my personal life in a way with it. And I wasn't used to doing that. I'm used to like, pretending to be another person and like always hiding my private life. And so um, it was interesting to like put that out in the world and know that people are going to know certain things that I went through. Um, and so after I recorded some songs, I like didn't do anything with them for years because I was just too scared to put them out. And then I remember one time I was like, you know what, I'm just going to put a song on SoundCloud and I'm not going to tweet it out or anything. I'm just going to like put it there and just leave. And, you know, if it's meant to happen, then it'll blow up. <laughs> and so <laughs> it was like my way of feeling like I was being brave, but I was really like giving myself a cop out. And so the next I go to bed the next morning, I wake up and I have this message from somebody and they're like, hey, just found your music. You're really good. Can you perform at this venue in a month or whatever it was? And I was like, like, damn it, they weren't supposed to find this. What am I going to do? And um, I basically just was like, this is my moment. This was meant to happen. Like, I can't miss this opportunity. This is something I really want to do. I always talk about it. I always dream about it. Like, you have to take every opportunity that you get. So I was like, okay, I'm going to respond. I'm going to agree to it. And um, I remember, like, I put off rehearsing because I had this like plan in my head that the day of the show, I was going to just like back out and say I was sick. And then like three days before Wes was like, you got to do this. You have to rehearse for this. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm probably going to back out of it. And he was like, no, you need to do this. Like every artist has their first show. I have such bad stage fright that I just was terrified. So we went to the studio he learned some songs to play on the guitar for me. Um, some were covers, some were originals. And I, I invited all my friends like the day of, and they're like, why didn't you tell us in advance? It's like, cause I planned on backing out last minute. And I ended up having so many people show up. I was like genuinely shocked by the amount of support that I received. And uh, I was so nervous. Like, I, my vocals were probably not great because I was just like so shaky and scared and like sweating. And, um, but I did it. And after I did it, I was like, I can do anything. If I just make myself do it, I really can do anything I set my mind to. And, uh, and that kind of pushed me to want to actually release it. I did a music video to one of my songs. Um, and then I released another song. I did another show. So, um, I was planning on getting more into it last year, but then obviously with COVID and stuff, there were no shows and nobody was really on set to film stuff. And I wanted to do music videos to my singles and stuff. So, um, I kind of have like put it on the back burner currently, but it's definitely something that I want to get back into, um, uh, put more time towards, but I just feel like it was a big hurdle for me. It took me a long time and a lot of like getting over fears I just had this like crippling fear with sharing my music for some reason. It was just a really vulnerable thing for me. The cool thing is that the music is out there now. So for anybody that's interested in listening to your music, where can they find your music? 
So my music is on Spotify. It's on Apple Music. Um, it might be on other platforms. I don't know. I put it on DistroKid and they uploaded it for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's on it's on all the major streaming platforms and also on YouTube. I have the audio on YouTube and I have um, I have a music video for In the Waves on YouTube. Uh, I want to start going on my YouTube channel more and like filming the behind the scenes of being in the recording studio, being on set, kind of sharing more of that stuff. So yeah, so just you can listen to my songs on Spotify and Apple Music, but also keep in touch with me on my social medias because I want to start sharing more on there too. Nice. And you know, it's interesting how music just kind of follows you because I know you were a zombie band singer in uh, Hubie Halloween with Adam Sandler. (laughs) Yeah, so um, that kind (laughs) of started like when I auditioned for that. And this is where like my family is just so clutch. So like my brother is close friends with somebody who is friends with the casting director from Hubie Halloween. And he reached out to my mom and was like, hey, like, what can I get you for Christmas? My mom was like, I just want you to get an audition for Amber with Barbie Block, who cast Netflix's Hubie Halloween. And he did it. And he got me an audition for Hubie Halloween. And it was for like five different roles, just like random little small ones. Um, Because there was like that big party scene, right? So there was like a bunch of kids from Disney and Nickelodeon that had been on on the set. And they all had like their own little one-liners and stuff. And so I auditioned for like five different like one-liner roles. And then I didn't hear anything for a couple of months. And I didn't think that I had booked it. It was like another thing that I kind of like forgot about. Didn't think that I had got it. And um, starting to realize actually like almost everything I book kind of goes that way. <laughs> but yeah, so um, when I first got the call, it was supposed to just be doing music for it. And then it was that I was going to be performing in the party scene um, and filming for it. Oh, actually, so I had auditioned for the different one liners and then they reached out to me like two months later and they were like, hey, can you send us a video of you singing? Like Adam wants to see if you can sing because he has you in mind for another role. And I was like, what? Okay. And I just like, I was having a really hard day. I was just like, I don't remember what I was going through, but I was going through it and I was really upset and I, um, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let this hold me back. I got to just do it. So I put on my makeup. I did my hair. I put on a, a shirt. I was like in my robe all day crying. I was like, I'm going to get myself together and I'm just going to do this. And so I like set up my little tripod, my little ring light. And I think I sang. oh, I sang a Jonas Brothers song. I sang, um, sucker by the Jonas brothers, which is like (laughs) such a random songs, but they were like, we just want something that's going to be kind of like easy, fun, nothing too crazy. So I was like, okay. So I just picked that one. It was just a fun, easy song. Um, and yeah, I ended up getting it and it was like one of the most incredible things I've ever worked on. I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday, which I'm like, I'm a Christian. I don't know why I love Halloween so much, but I do. It's so fun. (laughs) Um, And then also I was working with so many of my friends. Like there were so many actors in the movie that I knew and that were my friends. My friend Paris, my best friend, she was in it. Um, we had never worked together before surprisingly. And so we were so excited to do that together. Um, my friend Karin was in the movie, like love him to death. We just had so much fun, all of us together. And then like, I got to sing and perform. I got to record music with Brooks Arthur, who's like a huge successful producer. And it was just an incredible experience, like working with Dan Bula and Adam Sandler and knowing that they had like written these songs. It was just such a, it was such a fun time. You've accomplished so much in your career. Amber, what do you got going on next? Where can we see you next? For anybody that's interested in following your career and wanting to know more about you. I would say the best thing to keep in touch with everything I'm doing is my social media. It's it's Amber Frank. Actually, it's it's Amber Frank on everything. Um, I keep it all the same just so that's easy to find me. TikTok, all of it, Twitter. Um, I have a Facebook page. I have a YouTube that I'm starting to be more active on. Keep in touch with me on my social medias to see what's coming up. Um, there's some stuff that I can't really talk about right now that's going to be coming up pretty soon. If you were to offer any advice to anybody 
coming up, pursuing their dreams, following their, their goals, uh, what would you tell these people? Yeah, so I would say um, the biggest thing that's probably helped me is to like, just don't, it sounds so cliche, but you really can't give up. Most people have like a big vision for themselves and it's not something that you can achieve overnight. Sometimes with social media and all these other things, we get this idea that everybody else is doing so much better than we are. And you have to give yourself some grace and remember that like, we're all struggling. We're all working hard every day. We're all doing our thing. And so it's not going to be overnight success. You have to keep pushing forward. Don't be lazy. Don't let like, don't let things make you lazy. Don't feel discouraged. For me, there's times where I feel so discouraged that I don't do anything at all. And like, how is that helping you? So um, I would just say like, keep going, believe in yourself. Like if anybody's going to believe in you, it should be yourself. Um, and just don't take no for an answer. Always keep pushing and uh, Urban, I know you've been trying to reach out to me for almost a year and we finally made it happen. So I <laughs> like that. That's a great example of just when you set your mind to something, you can always accomplish it. You got to just be able to put the work in and uh, yeah, just don't give up on yourself. Keep going, have faith and don't listen to other people's negative opinions. Yeah, absolutely. I, we both yeah. agree here. And I also got to say, it's also timing because look, it, did it take me a, a while to get you on the show? Probably. <laughs> but guess what? It was it was for the right reasons, because now we were able to do it on a bigger platform. We're on the Grizzly podcast. And now it just makes sense because you're constantly on your hustle. And that's what we do here. That's what we like to push. And that's what we like to promote yeah. to the audience, the uh, the viewers and listeners. So Amber, we thank you so much for being a part of the show. Uh, yeah. We can't wait to see what's coming up next for you. And we're definitely going to tap in and definitely connect with you on social media so again amber drop that social media for us again so so everybody can follow it and everybody can just continue to follow your journey yes it's it's amber frank um on instagram tiktok and twitter and then just amber frank on my facebook and my youtube appreciate you guys having me on and letting giving me a platform to share my story and give advice and yeah it's an awesome thank you guys thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you so much, Amber. Uh, we'll be in touch. You take care and best of luck with your career. Stay on your grizzly, girl. <laughs> okay, bye. Thanks. Bye, guys. See you. Take care. Yo, turn it up. Hard work, dedication, and progress. Stay on your grizzly. Yeah. Thanks for checking out another Grizzly Podcast episode. We'll see you next time.